The age of the Earth comes from chemistry, from physics, from geology, from biology. It draws on all the sciences. The sciences are like a, a tapestry where you have these beautiful interwoven threads. Some of the threads are facts, and then crossing the facts, they're theories that hold up the facts, and the facts hold up the theories. And every now and then you have to pull out a thread, a theory, and throw it away and weave in another one because there's a better idea, just as Einstein to replace Newton. So the Einsteinian thread is, was better than the Newtonian thread. Um, you cannot simply decide that you are going to reject one of the key threads in this tapestry of science and pull it out and throw it away. You cannot reject the age of the earth without, in effect, saying that there could never have been an atomic bomb. If we are wrong about the age of the earth, we being the vast, vast majority of scientists, then we don't understand how atoms operate. Therefore, atoms could not fission and we could not have had atomic explosions, but we did. Uh, the lights that you have uh, uh, illuminating me wouldn't work. Uh, your automobile wouldn't work. And your flu shot certainly wouldn't work. And you notice right now how uh, our leaders are trying to avoid using the word evolve when they talk about the Asian flu virus, which is moving faster than we can keep up with. That's evolution. So if you, if you reject the age of the earth, it's completely illogical. It's rejecting the ability of humans to reason and determine cause when all they can see is effect. It's a repudiation of our intellect. I believe that creationists think that the earth is only a few thousand years old because they're hearkening back to a calculation made hundreds of years ago, which they're probably not even aware of, by uh, a uh, bishop who started at the end of the Bible and worked back toward the beginning and tried to calculate about how much time each of the events described might have taken, and he wound up concluding that the earth uh, was formed in 4004 BC. And this number got in uh, Bibles. It was even in the Bible, I'm told, on which uh, people swore at the Scopes trial. At the beginning of that Bible, it had the time, four th date 4004 BC. Um, this compressed geologic time scale means that everything had to happen all of a sudden. Everything that we see on the surface of the earth had to be created by some catastrophe, and the Bible conveniently describes one big catastrophe, the great flood of Noah. So believing that the earth is only a few thousand years old supports the belief that everything we see on the surface of the earth was created by the great flood. The basic principle of radioactive decay as it's used to measure rock ages is that some nuclei of certain elements are unstable and they spontaneously break down. Um, we know pretty well now which uh, do and which don't. We know that how fast they decay and it turns out that once you've measured the decay rate of let's say an atom of potassium, you can keep measuring atoms of potassium uh, till you're blue in the face and they will always have the same rate of decay and we describe that with half-life, that's the length of time it takes half of any given number of atoms to decay to the daughter product. So the principle then is a little bit like an hourglass. If when you walked into the room you found an hourglass uh, which, in which the sand was running through and it was exact, exactly half the sand had run through and accumulated in the bottom of the hourglass and it were a perfect hourglass, you would know that I turned it over uh, 30 minutes before you walked in the room and so forth. So you can think of the upper uh, cone of the hourglass containing grains of sand as being like the parent atoms, then they fall through the constriction and become the daughter atoms in the bottom. Uh, and so it's basically the, the same thing as a principle of an hourglass and if I know how many parent atoms are in a rock and I know how many daughter atoms are in the rock and I know how fast the parent turns into the daughter, then I can calculate how long that process has been going on. There are a few ways in which 
the simple principle of the hourglass and the decay of the parent to the daughter could go wrong. And scientists have known about these and worked with these and tried to avoid these mistakes for uh, almost a century now. One possibility is that um, there was already some sand in the bottom of the hourglass, let's say. There was already some of the daughter atoms present in the sample before the decay process started. They'd come from somewhere else. Somebody injected sand into the bottom of the hourglass somehow just to throw you off. Well, it turns out that we can tell beyond a shadow of a doubt when that has happened and we can correct for that. Uh, the other possibility uh, would be that um, some of the parent atoms or some of the daughter atoms somehow leak out over geologic time, and we're talking about a long time. Or another possibility is that some of the parent and daughter atoms leak in somehow. We're talking about rocks out in the, in the uh, raw earth here where things could happen. But the way geologists approach these techniques, they also can tell when that has happened. And when we can tell that either the parent or daughter atoms have been lost or gained, then we don't use those samples. We, we discard them. Now the other possibility, which uh, some people, some creationists have made a great deal out of, is that the rate of decay might change over time. However, scientists for a hundred years have tried to change the rate of decay. They've uh, put uh, radioactive atoms under high pressure. They've frozen them. They've raised them to extreme temperatures. They've boiled them. They've done everything you can think of to them. And only in one case has there been a detectable change in the rate of decay, and that was not one of the atoms that we use for age dating. So these methods work, and there's, there's no question about that. If they don't work, then thousands, scores of thousands of scientists around the Earth are wrong for some reason. Uh, scientists have confidence in the ages that they measure for the following reason. First of all, as I explained earlier, um, we can tell when uh, there was some original daughter, we can tell when the parent or daughter was gained or lost, and we know that the rates of radioactive decay don't change. So in general, there isn't anything wrong with these methods. But the way we actually confirm it is to take um, it, let's say we, we have a lava flow. One thing we do is we perhaps gather, say, a dozen specimens from that lava flow, in different places. And maybe the lava flow is 100 feet thick, and we pick uh, samples here and there throughout it. We take them into the lab, and we date each one of these samples. And we usually find that they give very, very close uh, ages. The ages that they give are very close to each other. The other thing we might do then is we might take one of those same samples and date it using, say, three or four different uh, parent-daughter pairs. And I won't go into what the pairs are, but there, there are four or five ones that geologists commonly use. And if you get the same answer using completely different chemical elements, using uranium or rubidium or potassium, which uh, uh, many of which don't behave like each other in the Earth, you get the same answer by these different methods, then you can be pretty sure that that's the correct age of that rock and that there's nothing wrong with your methods. As we've studied rocks on the Earth, uh, the oldest rock we've been able to find has gotten older and older and older. And remember that the Earth is alive. It's, it has internal fire. It has water on the surface. So there are lots of things happening on the Earth that tend to reset these clocks. So you can't just walk out to the first uh, outcrop you come to and expect to find a really old uh, rock or mineral. You have to keep looking. And uh, the, to cut to the chase on this question, we have now found minerals, several minerals on several different continents that are older than 4 billion years. One of them is 4.4 billion years old, almost as old as the moon and the meteorites, and since we believe that the solar system all formed at the same time, all the planets and the satellites and the meteorites, we believe that that is the age of the Earth, 4.5 billion years. And I think to reject the age of the Earth, one of the great human intellectual achievements, because it doesn't comport with your religious beliefs, it's a very dangerous and very sad event.